What is up ladies and gentlemen, today I am going to be showing you a little trick called masking. As you can clearly see I have this scene all set up. I also have these two characters in the background. But as you can see she would literally be going in front of the car. I want her to go behind the car. So that's where masking will come in handy. So. As you can see, I already have a file called Mask. As you can see, it's just a red screen which blocks out the whole thing. But we're going to fix it. We're going to grab a group layer and we're going to call that Masking Mask. And then we're just going to drag the three thing, two characters in the background into the file. Then we just double click on that, head to here, hide all, then apply. Now as you can see they disappeared but the background is still red. No problem. We just go into the mask layer and simply type right here. Add to mask but keep invisible which then makes it disappear. And as you can clearly see, these two characters have disappeared. Now, let's animate them. We'll grab, let's say, this one. And we'll have her walk, like, right to here. Which basically, wait, something's not right here. Oh, there we go. And now we'll just have her, as you can see, she is going behind the car. And we'll just have her like that. Now let's just see how that looks like in motion. Okay, looks like it's a little... Looks like it's not moving. It looks pretty good. But she still needs to animate. Fortunately, these are pretty much the default bone layers which come with walk, jump, and one. So I just hit that, hit double right click it and hit that and it initiates it. So now she's actually walking through the scene. And right here I want the other character to start moving. So we're just gonna click that so that way it does not start moving until it passed this point. And we're going to go it like right here and have her going this way. And then we head back to here and just like before we right click, click that and now of course it will still walk but as right here here's an issue right here you can see she's going in front of the fire hydrant and I want her to go behind it well we already know how to fix that let's take this layer and put that above that layer and now she is literally walking behind the fire hydrant I took me a while and it looks like it's pretty good yep oh whoa 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 you see that issue the eye is like not moving with the rest of the body that's an easy fix we first go into the file uh, here we go and basically what that's telling me is the head is not assigned to this bone. And now if I animate it at this point again, let's hide the two cores so we can literally see if that fixed the issue. And yep it does. But she looks like she's just staring across the street. Let's fix that shall we? 
I'm putting her here so we can actually see her when I move the eye, which is in this file, which I forgot to label it as eye. Okay. There we go. Eyeball. So we're just gonna have it so she's looking this way. Maybe do that and like so. And there we go. Now this is gonna be a YouTube short, so you probably only see these two characters, but you'll still see the characters like coming into the scene and then going out. They seem to be walking at a normal pace, but that's the beautiful thing. The reason I do it this way is so when I ready to do it in a full screen, it's already in full screen. I just have to lay out, print it as is. And it looks like it's pretty good right now. So, and it might take a while for it to render, depending on how many things are going on in the screen. Because right now we basically have four characters and two cores that change color. And we have sound effects and music and everything, so that could cause it to like lag a bit. As far as I know, the maximum amount of characters you could put on the screen are 10. And it doesn't matter if you have a beefy computer, which I do, it doesn't matter. The program can only handle 10 characters on the screen at once. And that's like if you count backgrounds. Uh, like the vehicles, special effects, it basically can only handle up to 10. If you try to do any more than that, then it will start to lag like crazy. Like, like I would be moving around the timeline right here and then it would just suddenly stop and then I wouldn't be able to move it anymore. I'm just examining it, using that as an example and then everything would like freeze up and if I'm lucky, it will just continue. If I'm not lucky, then it will crash. But on the plus side, Anime Studios has the thing called autosave. So if it does crash, it remembers the last few moments you were working on. So you don't lose all of your progress. So that's what I have so far. And Unfortunately, I had to cut this short because if I made it any longer, then it will not be seen on YouTube as a YouTube short. It would be considered a full video, despite the uh, length I go to. So, for parts like this, I would basically have to make it to two parts. And that would mean, if I do continue this story, that means I would have to have more characters like walking through the screen. But anyway, that's what I got so far. And now we'll just hit Control R. And then this window pops up. Then we just. I'm just going to save it as this. Oh, that's uh, inverted, Miss. Yeah, basically, I had this idea for an inverted world where all the characters are like inverted color schemes of themselves. I was thinking of giving them different names but that's a little bit more difficult. Anyway, this character I don't like but it is a hell of a boss character so I had to create her. Anyway, we'll just hit save and it will begin rendering it and it might take a while so just get ready to see the finished product when it's done also once it's done rendering it will auto play the video so that's something you need to know if there's a way of turning that off I have no clue how to do that but it doesn't matter to me it just basically says hey it's done with the rendering which means then I can get started on the other stuff. Anyway, that's how I do masking. 
anyway I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and an explanation on how many characters you should put in a animation because it's crucial you make sure you don't put too many characters if you want to have more than like 10 characters I suggest you build it up in layers for these two characters like say I wanted them to be two characters I would have to change the background to say a color like orange basically a color that you would not see on these two basically like a green screen but basically you can use any color as long as it's not a color that these two have on them so like if I put a green screen up then this shirt would like disappear if I put a right screen then they basically would look like they're just not there so you have to be careful with that anyway I'm rambling on but that's how I make my animations and you can see how long it takes so I'm not going to stay here and uh, bore you with the waiting for it to render scene the more less items you have in the screen it will go faster but for now this is Dimension Edge signing off